OK, let's get across today's headlines with Sky News senior reporter Cam Redden. Before we start, is today a special day for you, Cam, apart from being Australia Day? <laughs> I know it's a day we celebrate the country, Erin, but we should all be celebrating me. It is my birthday today. <laughs> I've got the, the Australian-themed tie on today. I couldn't get a tie with my face on it. This was <laughs> so I know you've got socks you with your face. You should have worn those. <laughs> it's hard to see under the desk, though. Cam, happy birthday. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, some serious news to start off with, and these images, God, they're sickening. Uh, a police operation underway mm. at North Sydney train station as I think buses are diverted as well. Uh, men in balaclavas? Yeah, quite confronting, Aaron. For the geography of Sydney too, these men, more than a dozen of them, many dressed in all black, some wearing balaclavas, walked onto a train at Artarman Station in the northern parts of Sydney and about 10 minutes away the train was stopped at North Sydney Station where police have put them in a carriage, they've, they've essentially quarantined them in that carriage and over the past few hours have one by one, two by two, been talking to these men and getting them off the train. It's been going for several hours now. The last time I spoke to New South Wales Police in the last few minutes was that they were getting through the last few of these men at the moment. But a pretty confronting scene for anyone who was trying to get in and around the city on a, a quite busy day. No indication, though, there was any violence, any further disturbance, but yeah. certainly a confronting scene to see that on, on a day like today. Oh, it's unsettling just looking at images, let alone for people that were there. Cam, Treasurer Jim Chalmers has defended the Prime Minister's changes to the Stage 3 tax cuts. No surprise there. Uh, it's now up to Labor and the Greens to negotiate a new tax cut deal. What's the latest there? The headline seems to change every couple of hours or so on the newspaper website. Yeah, the politics of this is fascinating, Erin. There is a race against time to some extent as well. There are only six weeks where the Senate will sit between now and when these tax cuts come in in July 1. So that's the time frame that the government needs to get its changes through the Senate. We're expecting David Pocock and Jackie Lambie uh, on the crossbench to support the changes. They've indicated that they wanted to see a rejig of Stage 3. So any remaining negotiations will have to go through the Greens. The interesting thing about the Greens under Adam Bant, I think, too, Erin, is that while they will argue, while they will make a big case for, mm. for further changes and to advocate their point, they have a track record of striking deals and yes. negotiating with the government. Things like the Housing Future Fund, yep. the National Reconstruction Fund, changes to the safeguard mechanism. You're exactly so right. They'll make the a lot of noise. Be done. They'll be critical, but in the mm. end, they will succumb. Mm. Yeah, and we can probably expect as part of that deal maybe some more for lower-income earners, maybe even those that aren't benefiting from these tax cuts because they don't pay tax. They might yeah. be on welfare or very low-income earners. So those sort of changes, perhaps something around job seeker or rent mm. assistance, they're more likely to be included around the budget. So we might get a clearer indication over the next couple of months of what further concessions there might be. Mm. We'll wait and see. Uh, speaking of changes, Cricket Australia changed its mind about mentioning Australia Day on... Well, Australia Day, what's the latest? It's amazing how organisations just tie themselves up in knots for mentioning what the date on the calendar is, Erin. We've seen Woolies do it in recent weeks mm -hmm. and Cricket Australia was the latest one. The ground announcer on the test today made the point that it was Australia Day. There was obviously a big welcome to country as well and there were Indigenous ceremonies as part of the pre-match um, pre sort of, uh, happenings as well. Um, probably for the best, we've been talking about some of the action outside the Gabra, and I think last I saw the Aussies were too, but not very much. But these protests out the front of the Gabra as well were quite concerning. There were many thousands of people at Invasion Day rallies right throughout the country. There were some delays for people getting into the ground mm. at the Gabba today before they had to be dispersed by police. You mentioned it a few moments ago. This is becoming rinse and repeat every year. Yeah. And whether you go to the cricket, whether you're trying to get on a train, yeah. whether you go to the beach, there are just disruptions everywhere. Everywhere. Hey, we've only got about 30 seconds, but I just need to give a shout-out to these Australians of the year, the two main ones, absolutely phenomenal human beings. Richard Scolia, Georgina Long, incredible. Mm -hmm. And you won't see many more moving speeches than a man on the stage saying, I'm dying, I don't want to die, and I'm going to use the technology, the methods that we've developed to save my life and hopefully the lives of others. Um, if you want to be inspired, Erin, I'd encourage mm -hmm. anyone to go and watch that speech last night. Pretty incredible. Young Australian of the Year, Emma McKeon as well. She's a star. Uh, and Yama Yunapingu as well, the Senior Australian of the Year. All inspirational and Australians we can all certainly get behind. Yeah, incredible. I think anyone who's who's been through the, the cancer roller coaster will relate to, to what he said. I think every loved one who's had it has said that and it's heartbreaking. So congratulations to them. Thank you, Cam. Happy birthday. Enjoy your evening and thanks for joining us.